in your mailbox, but then the cops will raid your house with a black mask wearing SWAT team looking for street LSD, but we're going to push this on kids? Alex, think about this. The drug manufacturers are actually creating their own markets for their drugs. And, and I have this in my book. I document this where I was actually told this at a sales meeting where we were creating the market for the next drug that was in the pipeline. And oh, wait a minute. Tell me about this. So you take, for example, a, a company like Eli Lilly who has a drug like Prozac. And then Prozac is known to induce psychosis. Then their, their number one seller, Prozac, goes off patent. And then what becomes their number one seller after that? The drug for psychosis, Zyprexa. So they've created their own market for the next best seller, the next b blockbuster drug. And that drug sold $5.8 billion in this country in 2004. So, I mean, are there that many psychotic people around unless you create psychosis? No, there aren't. And then Zyprexa is also known to induce diabetes in patients. What's the number two profit maker that Eli Lilly makes? They're diabetes drugs. Diabetes, in fact, they did a study. Americans are not consuming more sugar and fat than they were 10 years ago. We've been eating like pigs forever. Suddenly, everybody, I mean, how many thousands of percent has diabetes gone up? And now they have all these new types. And then so many times it's linked to people on these drugs. These drugs cause endocrine disorders, yes. And, you know, another thing, too, I learned is that a lot of these, half of these kids were prescribed it for off-label use, and that's what they do. You know, if you have anxiety, which is not depression, we're going to give you Zoloft. Even though Zoloft is meant for depression, it's approved for an off-label use. And it's the same with Paxil. That's, that's correct. So. And that's a very, very common practice, and that's what they use people like myself, a former drug rep, to go in and do is we get opinion leaders in the medical community and we get them to use it for that particular thing and then get them to say they had success with right. it and then bam I've got the name to go around drop with every doctor in town to tell them oh Dr. So-and-so who is the doctor that they admire or refer to or whatever is doing this and thus you get this huge off-label yeah. thing going on. And you know what's funny you know um, last year when I was filming it I went for my physical my doctor and I, I figured I'll tell my doctor about this get his opinion on it and he he closed the door, he told the nurse to go away, and for 20 minutes he was telling me how these drugs are good for people, how there's no problem with them. Of course, his son was on the his son's on the antidepressant. That's what happens is people get so invested in this, it's, it's like a Nazi death camp operator. They're not going to admit that what they're doing is bad, they're going to make excuses for it. Uh, I tell you, prescription suicide, you can go, of course, to the website and uh, get it. We'll tell you about that website in just a second. And, uh, Gwen, how do we get a copy of Confessions of an Rx Drug Pusher? I guess you go to iuniverse.com. Uh, That's one of these great self-publishing uh, sites. Got a lot of other great books. Mike Hansen's uh, Bohemian Grove book uh, he wrote uh, was uh, published by them. Very professional outfit, and people can get a copy there of Confessions of an Rx Drug Pusher. And I would imagine now Amazon and others have it. It's uh, by Gwen Olson. Both of you, tell us about the movie. Tell us about the book. Well, the book is available, as you said, on uh, iUniverse.com, Amazon.com, Barnes & Nobles, pretty much all of the dot-coms that carry um, self-published books. And you can get it also off of my website, GwenOlson.com, and I also encourage any listeners that wanted to talk to me personally or relay their stories to me that they can also leave me a message on that site, GwenOlson.com. Robert, how do folks get a copy of your new movie? And there's two ways to do it. You can go to the PrescriptionSuicide.com website, and we're taking pre-orders. We should be shipping in about two weeks. Also, you can log on to participatenow.net, and that's a website that we created for uh, people who want to have screenings of it, who want more information about the drug. There's tons of links to resources there, and you can get your community screening going if you want, and you can order the uh, DVD there, and it's just a fantastic website. Robert, I want you to tell the story about South by Southwest, which will have the most mindless films you can imagine showing at it. Uh, they're blocking your film. You're an, you're an Emmy Award winner. You've got all these awards, uh, and, and they're just saying, hey, we don't want it, but not just this film festival. Others are. Is that fear of the big RX boys? I think it is. You know, I, I'll be honest with you. I've been I've been in the industry for almost 13 years, and, and I had never heard of half these film festivals that are out here. I never heard of South by Southwest. So what we did was a way of getting the film out. We thought we'd go to the festival circuit. The first uh, festival we screened at was the Fort Lauderdale International Film Festival, which embraced the film. We uh, premiered it there. It was a sellout crowd. Now, yeah, let's be clear. Real film festivals won it. I mean, you've had your other films at Sundance. You've won the highest awards in the country. But the little pathetic Lewis Black, no way. 
Right. Actually, you know, at the at the screening at the premiere at Fort Lauderdale, we had eight attorneys fly from across the country. One of them was from a pharmaceutical company. Interesting, <laughs> isn't it? So um, we've entered quite a few festivals and basically have been turned down. And I got upset at one one, so I decided to call him up. And I won't mention any names. It's Sonoma, but. Um, <laughs> He told me, he emailed me back saying, you know what, your film is, uh, it's too heavy. It's artless. We like artsy films, films with visual effects. And I'm like, this is a documentary. I mean, it, there are kids killing themselves. What is the problem here? And I think it's just a too heavy of a film for these festivals. And, you know, I look at the roster of what they had last year in documentaries, and it's like beer-making companies, pizza companies. Uh, it's it's ridiculous, but South by Southwest decided not to take it. I don't know why. I had two Austin families here, and for some reason, I guess they don't like the locals. Well, uh, listen, I mean, no. they, they love the establishment. On every issue, that's what these pimps are selling is the New World Order. There's really no difference, except they're worse, between these psychotropic pushing drug companies and the cigarette uh, salesmen. I mean, they knew cigarettes were killing people 50 years ago, 100 years ago, but they covered it up, but at least... They weren't making you take it. They weren't in the schools going, here, you know, you've got to smoke these, you've got to get addicted. I mean, this is nothing but drug dealers uh, who are out there making people take uh, their uh, drugs. Robert? Yeah, I agree with you on that. And, and the screening is going to be fantastic. I just got back from Toronto last weekend where it was a packed, packed house up in Toronto. And a woman up there is taking uh, the film on a 20-city tour up there. She lost her husband to this, to the drugs. The good news is all over the country, uh, people are starting to wake up to this forced drugging. They are starting to, to figure out what's happening. They're beginning to realize and actually read the, uh, the drug's own inserts. The companies are now getting sued. The problem is, as you said earlier, they just come out with new drugs all the time, so they're one step ahead of us. Uh, in closing, uh, both of you, where do you see this going? I hope we see these drugs removed from the marketplace. That's my desire, and I will work to see that happen until the day that I die. Exactly. I hope, you know, we, we, we made this film not to make money, but to get the message out. And that's what it's been. I mean, I'm here on my own time, my own dollar. I fly across the country on my own time, my own dollar. I don't get paid for this. Um, we pay. But, but you need to make money to be able to get your message out. Absolutely. That's why we sell the DVDs. I mean, it, it, it goes back into paying for airfare and hotels. or You know, it, it all, it, there's a cost to this. You know that. There's a cost to this. So, um uh, it's it's an important message to get out there. I feel it's so important that I'm out here doing I'm out here in Austin th this weekend. And the same goes for me, Alex. I self-published my book not because I didn't think it was good enough that a publisher would pick it up. In fact, it has won the Editor's Choice Award from iUniverse, but because I wanted the information to get, get out as swiftly as possible. It's already largely outdated with statistics and that sort of thing. And I, I purchased the book, I mean, in myself, and I give it to people because I want the information to get out. I'm not trying to get rich, but I am trying to get even.